Combine Turf Racing Super Saturday on September 17th. The $1 million Rico Woodbine Mile highlights a jam-packed day of events on the road to the Breeders' Cup World Championships. Win and you're in. Wager Woodbine today. All right. So Woodbine's pumped up for its big Woodbine Mile card. And I have no doubt that my guest today, Sherry, a.k.a. Go Philly on Twitter, a.k.a. The champion of Moira going into the Queen's Plate, <laughs> Sherry. You talked me into her, and I'm glad you did because that was uh, a tour de force over on the turn, really, and then she poured it on. But uh, I was not veering in that direction until you had me uh, take a closer look at what she had accomplished in the Oaks. And, boy, she was good, but now the pressure's on for an encore. You know, I still am – over the moon with what we saw that day. Like I, I honestly really believe that she is something special, but to see her just show her authority was, it, I don't know, it gave me goosebumps. It's like one of those, one of those races you can just really appreciate as a handicapper that, you know, you see it, it didn't totally unfold the way I thought, but I mean, for her to be so dominant, I mean, what a pleasure to watch, you know, like normally when we see heavy chalk win, we're like, uh, you know, <laughs> because we're trying to find the value. But luckily for me, I, you know, I singled her and my stuff and it, it paid off. So it's nice to be rewarded for having such a strong feeling. And she's just amazing. Absolutely. She's amazing. No, I was, uh, felt very fortunate to be there live and, and see it and the roar from the crowd when she, when she made her move is, uh, what, what big racing is all about. So, it's great to be a part of it. Unfortunately, we'll not be a part of the Woodbine Mile Card Live, but you will. Yes, and I will be I think, there. Uh, we talked or exchanged message on Twitter when I posted Wise Dance replay. I don't think we <laughs> knew each other then, so we were in the building at the same time, uh, but didn't make acquaintance. Uh, I'm not sure when the coffee crisps first crossed my <laughs> workstation in the press box, but uh, you and I have, it, it's been going on several years now. Several years, uh, I yeah. always appreciate your Woodbine perspective and uh, came through for us in the Queens plate and uh, looking forward to seeing what we could come up with in the Woodbine mile. But before we get to the race specifically, as we kind of heard in the little commercial from our friends uh, at Woodbine, it really is a jam packed car top to bottom. It is. It's phenomenal. And, you know, in the past, we usually had um, the two-year-old Breeders' Cup win in your ends on a different day. So I actually like it that we have them all combined on the one card now. And it just makes it that much, that much more exciting and builds the hype for the Breeders' Cup. And I mean, as you know, like a lot of our, our races here are solid preps going into the Breeders' Cup mile. I mean, it's been proven that we have, you know, some winners come back to do very, very well, especially being at Keeneland. Hmm. So it's a, it's exciting. And I, I just like it that it's all in the one day. It just yep. really adds to the, adds to the excitement of it all. They're calling it uh, super Saturday Woodbine mile. Uh, but also we have the, uh, the summer stakes and the Natama, which are those two-year-old races. The Woodbine mile is race nine of 12 kicks off the late pick four as well as uh, the all grade one double, I believe the 10th is uh, the Natama. So uh, yes, that's right. The Natama is the 10th. So a pair of grade ones back to back. And then the, uh, the summer stakes also elsewhere on the card. There's some guaranteed pick five and pick four pools throughout the day. Uh, they always do a good job on their big day and they did a good job putting this field together. I was kind of nervous when I heard, Sherry, a couple of the names that they were saying would show up here, including Modern Games, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf winner. And I was thinking, oh, is that going to scare some horses away? But it did not. No. Um, actually, this is probably one of the biggest, most deep fields that we've had in quite some time. I agree. So I, 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 I love it that it didn't scare anybody away, in all honesty. <laughs> And I, I think that, you know, our weather has been fantastic. We're going to have a super weather day sun, Saturday. So we should have a very nice firm turf course. And I think that's something to really take note of because in the fall, you know, we will have dew on the grass in the mornings, but in the fall, it tends to be cooler and the turf can, can, can tend to be a little bit more squishy, which mm. people gravitate more towards the Europeans. But I think that's going to not be the case this year. So little bit of a tidbit to keep in yeah. mind. All right. Delmar has the tides. Woodbine has the dew. <laughs> and uh, 
sometimes we jump around from uh, contender to contender. I thought this field was worth making sure we touched on them all. Some might get more attention than others, but uh, we'll just start from the rail out. And uh, I think we start with the Queen's Plate winner, if I'm not mistaken. Did Mighty Heart win the Queen's Plate? Mighty Heart won the Queen's Plate, yeah. correct, wire to wire. Two years ago and uh, <laughs> is four for 10 on the synthetic. He's certainly no stranger to Woodbine. Turf, on the other hand, a little different. Uh, 0 for 2 on the EP Taylor Turf course, but uh, has faced some good ones. That was Stakes Company last out fifth, but beaten less than two lengths. I was surprised to see this horse 20 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, it had the look of me of definitely a mid range shot. Uh, at, at 20 to 1, I would probably have to consider a wager if I'm being honest. Um, definitely don't think is the most likely, but. At least they'll be sort of controlling things from the rail, and twenty to one seems too high to me. Well, I think the reason being for that is if, if and you know, maybe you see different than me, but I see four horses here that look to go to the front. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that this race really doesn't set up for Mighty Heart, and also he's drawing going from that rail post, so you know that he's more likely going to go right. right? So he's going to have company. He's not going to be all alone on the lead. And he's only had a couple turf starts, hasn't hit the board. So really, you know what, I think I think if everything goes right, he could make top three. I'm not using him at all in my top five. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see what the board actually says because I was like, well, at eight to one, he's trained. You know, everyone knows Josie and Queens Plate winner. I was kind of thinking would take that kind of money, but – if it if it ignored a twenty to one, I would I would upgrade based on what my initial thoughts were. But I think it's the turf, right? Like I think yeah. it's because it's on the turf. And last out, like I really like they tried to give him a run over it just to kind of see. And it you know, it was okay. It was okay, but I don't think that it stood out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that that's why you're going to see the 20 to one. And again, he is a favorite. I mean, he's an emotional favorite. He's a sentimental favorite because he does have one eye. Right. So I think you could Forgot see, that. yeah, I think you, you're going to see a lot of the emotional betting with him. And because a lot of people just love him, he's a woodbine favorite. So I can right. honestly see a lot of that sentiment, sentimental money coming in. All right. Well, uh, that's mighty heart. Uh, definitely uh, agree on Going to have to go from the rail, so that might compromise a horse who does not need to go and uh, displayed a pretty incredible kick when needed. Has been close to the pace at times, too, uh, so Joe Talmo could have options from the relatively inside draw of the two-hole. That's Ivar, and in retrospect, and I was there that day, it was Indiana Derby Day when the Schaefer off the long layoff uh Six to five after the race, probably most people were thinking he should have been one to five. That definitely signaled he's back. Uh, five for 11 on turf, two wins at the distance. Woodbine debut, but uh, to me, Ivar is definitely one of the dangers here. Uh, and I agree. I think that he's going to be the play for a lot of people um, from, the, from the U.S., I think that they've got him pinpointed. And you know what? Some like it hot Brown just came back to win at Kentucky Downs, did he not? Yes. Who yep. ran third to him. So really that kind of flatters his form right now, right? You know, what I what I kind of just, I don't, I'm always leery for horses that haven't had a run over the surface. That's something that I've always said. And just because, you know what? Maybe the long stretch won't work out quite as much for him. But I think, you know, or for certain individuals, for him, I think it'd be okay because he's a closer anyway. So he could, he really could sit back and like off the speed and end up having the perfect trip. He really could. Cause I, we got that really nice long stretch. You know, he's five out of eight at the distance. He wants respect. I, I you know, I think he's going to end up going favored in my opinion. I wow. think, yeah, I do. I think he's yeah. going to end up going favored. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know I would, how I feel about. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I'd certainly be far less interested as the favorite uh, than I would at four to one. Uh, I, I do think he might be a little less than that. So, favorite though, that's that's a bold prediction. 
I do. I think he will. Yeah, I think come post time, he's probably going to go favored. All right. Uh, well, I don't think uh, Wakanaka will be favored, but uh, it's certainly a fun name to say. Certainly looking forward to Robert Geller's spin <laughs> on that one, although he's, he's already had a chance because this one shipped in to win the dance smartly. For the Mott Barn, uh, cuts back a little bit back to the mile where uh, he is, or excuse me, she is two for five. Mm-hmm. And uh, gets, uh, the, the weights here are kind of interesting because Ivar is at 122. Um, so it's only a pound back to walk a neck off the loss. But um, she's, I mean, again, one of those that contributes to a deep field, I would say is probably on my bottom half of those in here. But, uh, you know, with Ivar and, and uh, modern games figuring to take, I think a ton of money, some of these aren't going to take money. And if she's one of them, I could see her, you know, using in the mix underneath. Yeah. I love her actually. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to actually put her in the top spot to be honest. Wow. Uh, w- when she was here and in the dance smartly, she was phenomenal. She looked phenomenal. She ran phenomenal. Feb Feb Rover, who she beat, is a really, really nice horse. And I just, I was so impressed with her that day. So, so, so impressed. And her figures, she came back with huge figures, which puts her right in the Ivar category. So to me, um, and I think she will get overlooked as well, but because she's already had that race as well over the turf and she... She thrived on it. I think that she's very dangerous. And I've, uh, over the past, Team Valor has sent some very, very tough competition here. I think it's one of the races that they they put on their calendar and they love to have horses compete in. If you note, they do have two in here. Um, they have the seven homer screen as well. But I really like this filly. I think she's got she's in with a very, very good shot. I wish Hernandez would have stayed on her just because mm-hmm. he wrote her last time. We do have a new jockey with Manny Franco. But I think she's going to sit just the perfect trip in behind the speed. I think she's going to get everything her way. And she, out of the distance, she's never missed the board. All right. That, she's definitely going to be a price. And uh, the other part of the ownership – group is uh gary barber who also right. is no stranger to winning races at woodbine so uh yeah well met connections and they've already come up so that's uh definitely worth noting um, well, another little tidbit i'll give you with yeah. her is she was second to regal glory two back right regal Go- glory ran second to in italian too four back. right and but but regal glory competed against casa creed in the four-star day at saratoga uh. Right. And ran second. And I mean, yeah. Cassie Creed was just phenomenal that day. So she's definitely ran against some very top quality competition that I really think she warrants respect in here. No, uh, hard, hard to disagree with that. And especially at the price. Not like exactly. you're trying I to, think we'll even get higher with her. Yeah. Not so. like you're trying to convince someone at two to one. <laughs> Another 10 to one on the morning line. Uh, first international shipper is Finest Sound, who comes in uh, for uh, Sheikh Mohammed. This is not uh, <laughs> this is not the Godolphin Sheikh Mohammed, so that's yeah. why I was making sure I clarified that. This is not Godolphin, but uh, this is an Irish bread. Simon Crisford is the trainer who is no stranger to the Godolphin operation. I'm sure very similar connections throughout. And this one kind of makes me think of what you noted, about maybe the turf course because the last race was on soft ground. Right. I don't really see this kind of firm in Europe in general. And uh, just everything I looked at with the pedigree and what finest sound had done and some of the time post ratings, it did look like he was maybe a, a cup below this group and won't, won't get any benefit from the ground. You know, I, I agree with everything that you're saying, but the one thing that I always keep in mind is when I see this jockey come here. <laughs> because good point. he for some reason has this course's number and he always manages to find himself in the top three so sometimes with a lot of these the european horses because it, it's really it is really hard to gauge their form coming over and i did look you know th- their version of good ground and our version of good ground is completely separate so, you know, you have to kind of take the, and, and I've been burned by that angle as well. I mean, Desert Encounter came here and schooled us a couple of times and, you know, and, and this jockey was on him. 
So, you know, you have to, sometimes you have to put that into play a bit. Like he beat me twice. <laughs> so, you know, for me in my head, I just have to give it, I will use somewhere on my ticket just for that factor, because he seems to just run like race phenomenally on this course. So I can't completely rule him out, even though maybe he he's not one of the upper echelon in the, in the race per se, but sometimes the jockey really can help find, find. No. Uh, yeah. And again, you know, 10 to one, it's a different conversation than if we thought everyone's going to bet this horse because he's the European alternative. Cause we actually have another European right. uh, who has been to the States <laughs> before sort of won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile <laughs> Turf if, for wagering purposes. Uh, he didn't exist in the race, but uh, he did get credit for the win in his record and is run okay uh, this year. Um, the, the numbers have, have come back fine uh, for those who kind of want to believe the international numbers. And Brisnet has some class ratings in which modern game stacks favorably. Uh, and this is a good often product. And Charles Appleby, uh, seemingly won everything last year that he shipped into the States. <laughs> has not had quite that year this year. He does have two wins, uh, but uh, has some losses as well. But nevertheless, based on the Breeders' Cup, based on the international form, understandable why Modern Games is the favorite. I do think he's going to be over bet, and I'm going to try to beat him. Yeah, I, I totally suppressed that memory of <laughs> Breeders' Cup until I saw he was nominated and I was like, Oh, <laughs> and then it all kind of came. To try, yeah. it bad. But, um, it's nice to see him here. You know, I'm really looking forward to actually getting a good look at him and see how he's matured from two to three. And he did run a, a fantastic race at the Breeders' Cup. I'm not going to deny that. I think although the other handicapping pain I'll put aside, um, no, I think it was much the best. <laughs> I, to me, he's going to get over bet because of because of Charlie Appleby and his modern games, and he ran against Baid, right? Last out, and yeah. just, you, you know, like, do I think he's good? Sure, at seven to five, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to try to beat him too. Uh, and plus, I'm going to I'm going to have a look at how um, his behavior is that day. And I think that's something that everybody else should maybe take into consideration because we are going to have an unseasonably warm day on Saturday. So um, I'm going to really keep a watch on a lot of the shippers that do come in just to kind of see how they're handling it, because it might not be the conditions that the owners were hoping for when they came over. But he's. Sure. Like, I understand where people are coming from at seven to five. No, thank you. I'll look elsewhere. And will we be able to see your uh, condition report at Go Philly? <laughs> you bet. All right. So make but sure you know you're what? following see, Sherry. But see, this is the thing, too. So Raging Bull last year, right? He, you know, he had, he was not happy prior to the race. And I think he went off at seven to five last year, too. And Town Cruise ended up, you know, wiring the field. So sometimes, <laughs> And I mean, Raging Bull is, is an American horse, but I'm just using that as an example that, you know, what sometimes you can kind of tell if they're just not in their comfort zone or have their game face on. And Town Cruise ended up pulling a huge upset for the home team. So one like you uh, mentioned with Wakanaka, you like what you saw in the dance smartly and yes. maybe shipping in it's you'll it's like oh i can't believe this is the same philly and that'll give you an opportunity to say well, maybe i need to look elsewhere or yeah. you'll recognize her and say all right she was ready then she's ready now right um, but yeah. we'll all need to follow go philly to <laughs> get the scoop uh, as they all ship in are you, you going to be out there before saturday uh, i might pop out tomorrow i'm going to wait and see i'm going to wait all and right. see well, we'll yeah. be we'll be watching the feed regardless. Uh, speaking of the home team, uh, Cheryl Spite uh, for Roger Atfield, uh, one of the more decorated uh, trainers in Canadian history. Emma Jane Wilson, known to locals as well, and uh, I believe Charles Fipke. I, I don't want to say your neck of the woods, but in Canada, it's all east or west to us <laughs> Americans. Uh, he's from the western part of the country, right? Yes. 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 Um, so yeah, Canadian connections for Cheryl Spite. And this was another one, Sherry, I thought, um, I don't know, maybe I, I should give, uh, the, the betters at Woodbine more credit than just thinking they're going to bet the, uh, the home track horses, so to speak. But I thought he would take more money just 
is a known commodity. And I thought the races before the seven furlong effort uh, this year were competitive with this group. I was kind of surprised to see 12 to one. Uh, but was that last race really that bad that people are sort of abandoned ship? Well, I think there's a few things you have to take into consideration with him. Yes, he's horse for course. He's going to he's gonna like it here. He's going to run well, I think. Um, I think 12 to 1 might be a little bit on the higher end side. Uh, but again, I think that's because we have so much play that's going to go into modern games and into Ibar. So that's where I think that that's coming in. Mm -hmm. um, that last race, yeah, he was a little bit disappointing, if I'm being honest. Right? I mean, he went off at 2-1. to one. And he was so dominant in the maker's mile. Hmm. Like, well, not dominant, but I mean, he was just so, he showed such heart that day. Right. And I think once you see that, everybody expects to see that every time. Right. Right. And, you know, then he kind of went to the Churchill Downs turf and that didn't go so well. And then they put him on dirt. And so I think people are just kind of wondering, like, OK, what's the plan with him? What are we you know, what's the end goal? Um, so they put him in the Cannot Cup. Now he gets to do a mile, which maybe this is a prep for Breeders' Cup. And it's not necessarily on the win radar. Maybe they're just trying to get him back into form so that he peaks at Breeders' Cup. There could be so many different questions pertaining to him. And I think that that's kind of where everybody's head is. Will he take money? Yeah, he will. I mean, I don't think we'll get 12 to 1 on him. I could see maybe 7, 8 to 1. You know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to think of him yet. Uh, no, he's Seems another smart, one that I'm going to Either way, yeah. right? What's that? I mean, seven or eight to one is too short. Yeah, like it, it, it's going to be kind of, I think, one of those game day decisions when you see the tote board, right? Which it usually is. But for myself, like, I think when I'm playing pick fives or I, I will not use him at, at this time. Yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm with for, you. For, 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 you know, and, and that's hard for me to say because I am a big fan of his. <laughs> But what I've seen the last, you know, it is hard to say for, for what I've seen from the last couple of times. It's like, well, maybe has he lost a step yeah. or is he just a tad off form? I'm not really sure. Maybe that big race at Keeneland took something out of him. I'm not really sure. But this race will be a real, like, it'll be, yeah. we'll see where he's at. Waters right? are pretty deep. So going exactly. the wrong way isn't uh, into this type of race. Not for me, uh, certainly at 12 to 1 or lower. I the can't board will tell you, though, you too. I mean, that, I, would, I would definitely watch the board. Yeah. Right. Well, I can tell you that the next horse is my pick for the race. I'll just rip the band-aid off. But uh, I think Homer Screen has a huge chance in here. Ten to one, uh, absolutely on board with. And based on what you've said of of Ivar and and modern games, who we know will take money, Ivar will be the second choice. Uh, Hopefully we'll get it. I would actually, if I'm being honest, be fine with six or eight to one. I def I just think Homer screens right there among the more likely winners of this race. Uh, the race at Del Mar last out, uh, just it's, it's death to be that wide on those turns at Del Mar. Uh, it is a, a mile over on the main track and the turf course there. I, you know, similar in some ways, you would say, well, Churchill's a mile with a turf course inside of it, Santa Anita. Del Mar is, is just more bull ringy than both of them. So being wide like that is just not going to be a winning trip. Uh, but persevered, passed a ton of horses late. And Neil Drysdale, uh, while this horse does not have any races over Woodbine, Neil Drysdale is no stranger to shipping in and winning this race. He's done it three times and uh, shipped in to win some other grade ones as well. So you already mentioned Team Valor. Uh, it all adds up to me, Sherry, that it's uh, yeah. 10 to 1 I'm in. They had the crux, I think. With yes. Neil, right, yeah. Yep. Um, you know what? It's funny that you mentioned him because I just put him on my list before, <laughs> before we started talking. Um, I think he's very dangerous, and I do think that he's one that's going to appreciate the longer stretch. Uh, you know, um, 
And he's, yeah, I, I, I agree with everything that you said. I think he's going to like the cutback actually to the mile distance. And I think he's going to like the, the one turn long stretch. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with you on that actually. Well, more is there to say than that. But, yeah. Uh, well, you pegged it perfectly. You and, and I both, and, uh, both with 10 to ones on top. So that's uh, certainly uh, an exciting start. Um, now, we way back when, when we talked about the rail, Mighty Heart, we talked about maybe some other speed in the race. Mm -hmm. We really haven't been through any horses that have early speed, but now we're finally getting there. They are. The, they're all on the outside <laughs> except for the rail. Uh, but Get Smoking seemingly just knows one way to go, and that's on the front end. Right. And he does get Raphael, who uh, is that just a Cassie thing? He went with Mark or. You know, I looked at that because when I, obviously when I looked at, at uh, my play, I was like, well, how come Raphael didn't stick with her? But I do think it is. I do think it could be a Cassie thing. Um, and you know what? I really like this horse. I just think that, you know, what? there's there's too much speed. There's just too many others that are going to be going on the front. And it's it's just too hard for him. Again, he was in that Casa Creed, Regal Glory uh, race and the four star Dave too. And, you know, I just can't see anybody going wire to wire in here. I just, I can't. So unfortunately mm -hmm. I can't make a case for him. No, uh, I, I feel similar. And it's one of those, like, not that you want to see any horse do poorly. We are betting against some, so you don't maybe want them to win, but from a handicapping perspective and just thinking about where we go from here, he's the type of horse where, the mouse, the losses might start to mount and then the price yeah. goes up in a certain spot where he might be loan speed or best of the exactly. speed. And exactly. then you, you get an opportunity and people, oh, where did that race come from? And, you know, it's just the dynamics were in his favor going forward. But yes, uh, this week in this race, uh, he just seems a little up against it. Uh, and part of the reason why is because the horse to his outside, number nine, War Bomber, uh, has similar tactics as does Mighty Heart, which we already mentioned. And uh, I, I would think if we don't like either of those two, probably War Bomber isn't on your list either. Well, if you take a look too at Get Smoking, they did try to rate him and it didn't go well. You know, so for me, I just had to, I had to, even, even with Raphael on him, even if Raphael gives him the best trip <laughs> in the world, it just might not necessarily, he's going to need to get it that day. Right. Right, especially with War Bomber to his outside, like it's going to be a mad dash for the lead, and it's going to be a mad dash coming down the stretch. Yeah, and, well, and even uh, like Wakanaka and uh, my pick, uh, Homer Screen, both I would expect deeper closers. But Ivar has been as needed. Is uh, I mean, he's pressed a pace before, and he's been within a few lengths. Um, now, if they go super fast, I think. Joe will probably just try to be a closer with Ivar too. But if for whatever reason, let's say Mighty Heart gets buried on the rail, War Bomber doesn't show up and get smoking's trying to walk the dog, uh, Ivar can be closer. So it's not even like there's any gimmies right behind him. Uh, no. Things go get smoking's way. And then we haven't even mentioned, well, we've mentioned him, but in the scope of the pace conversation, last year's winner is back and uh, yeah. a repeat going gate to wire for town Cruise seems uh, pretty difficult. And he's, and they're taking the blinkers off him here too. So, um, you know, he was, a, he was in, in fantastic form last year. Everything went his way and I'm happy. Like he deserved that. He was a champion this year. You know what? This is going to be his third start. He's run the same way every time and gotten the result, the same result. <laughs> I think he's in deep. I think he's in very deep. He's from that outside post. I love him. Like it was fantastic what he did last year. It's going to be a tall task for him to, to be a repeat winner. Yep. Uh, agreed. Uh, and then uh, last and not least though, uh, certainly uh, in part because of the uh, dynamics of how this one runs, but Mark Cassie has it covered on both ends, gets smoking on the front, March to the arch. From the rear, uh, this one keeps his jockey, though. Patrick Husbands stays aboard. And uh, there's so many others I think are faster that have this one's running style. 
But if we really think the speeds are going to show up, and we've mentioned there are four of them, three of them directly to this one's inside, could just end up being the one that gets the best trip, and that could be good for a slice. But a, a win would surprise me. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm actually going to use him. And the reason being, Patrick knows this horse really, really well. I mean, that's, you know, he's been he's ridden him probably the most out of his whole career. Last out, he was just too far back. He had way too much ground to make up. And you know what? Maybe he's kind of lost a little bit of a step. He's seven years old now, but he loves this course. He's making the third start off a layoff. Um, I do not think you can discount him whatsoever. I think he's going to be in there at the All finish. Right. And I, I think that that last race actually set him up good. He was, he was one of the, like, he took a lot of money. I can't remember who scratched. There was a very, um, there was a very important scratch in that race in the King Edward. And he just, he was just too far back at the beginning, but now he gets like, it's the same distance. He's going to have a cooking hot pace on the front. And I think, People are just going to kind of package him out and forget about him coming from the 11 hall. And I think he's very dangerous. I think he's very, very dangerous in the spot. If he was ever going to run, like pop a good one, I think this, this is, is it. Good. Yeah, I agree with that. Who's the horse that's beaten him the last two times? Philo. That's another, that's a Cassie horse that did not oh, enter okay. in here. Beautiful horse. Monster. Mm -hmm. Like beautiful, beautiful. And I that if he's going to the race at Keeneland. That foe isn't in here, so um, I, I think I think he's definitely one you got to use on your ticket somewhere, and I do think that you will get a little bit higher of a price on him as well. Um, and you know, one more thing I wanted to mention with Town Cruise, Daisuke Fukumoto has been pulling in some really impressive turf wins. Mm. Just a, just a little tidbit, if you you know, yeah. if, I don't want to talk anybody off a horse that they're really got a solid feeling of and you know he has been really riding well lately so it's just a little bit you know it's just a little bit of tidbit information that i i you know dice k if anybody can get him home it could be dice k but just again the race dynamics doesn't really look like it's going to be working well for him and i i brought this up with dice k because he actually does have a positive roi on the turf which uh, considering he's uh, a well-known jockey that probably gets his share of money, uh, that's pretty impressive. And he's actually almost break even on the year uh, across 285 mounts. So uh, someone who doesn't get his due on the tote board um, might be able to, to do the best he can on town cruise, given the other pay circumstances, but definitely worth noting of, of the jockeys up at Woodbine, uh, somewhat right. under bet in the turf. And maybe event. he could hang in. Maybe he could hang in. You know, if you're looking for one of the speed that could maybe hang on for a bit, you know, if you want to use him and you're trying your super, if you're looking to build your ticket that way, right? However, people yeah. want to go. It's just a little bit of very interesting, you know, something to think about as you're structuring your tickets. So, uh, sounds like you have the three on top, right? Wakanaka. Yeah, she's for, now. for sure. For sure. Yeah, I'm definitely. I, I wanted to ask you one question on what you what you think about this too. Uh, yeah. With modern games being three, three years old, there's never been a three year old winner in this race. Really? Do you think, That's nope. interesting. No. Hmm. Uh, I, I will say with him being three, so there's you know four or five year olds. There's the filly. He's carrying 123 pounds, which uh, many others in here are at 122 and 121. So nice. as a three-year-old, that that actually is, a, you know, the scale of weights by age, he's actually having to give some weight uh, to a few of these based on that. So that's kind of interesting and, yeah, maybe another reason. Now, he's carried 128 um, in Europe, so... You could I just, say that, I, I found that interesting. I found that I found that interesting when I saw the morning line on him, and I can't remember where I heard the tidbit that there's been no three-year-old that has ever won the mile. I'll, I'll have to double check that. Yeah, and if you're no, that's interesting. Make sure yeah. you all double check that <laughs> because I'd like to know how, like, who has tried and were they actually contenders? Like, that's always part of it. But nevertheless, pretty interesting. I think a, a big piece of this race too is the division in general here in the states. I guess 
Gufo might, might be the leader. Um, yeah. I've already forgotten who won the Arlington Million. Uh, oh, that horse, Brendan Walsh's, that had won the uh, the Woodford Reserve San before Santin? the Derby. Santin? Santin, right? S A N T I N? Yeah, Santin. Yes, San Santin, something. So like he's that. he's a leader in the division. He has two grade one wins, but you know, a horse who wins a race like this and then goes on and wins the Breeders' Cup, right? Could easily be champion. So to me, there's definitely some things on the line here. Uh, but um, I'm going to go with Homer Screen, and I hope we hope we get ten to one. But I'll take six or eight. Yeah, I you know, and again, I looked at that one a little bit later, and has every every reason to win. You're absolutely right. Like, I, I wish I could actually go against you, but I'm not going to use on top. I'm definitely, I'm definitely, well, because you know what, like. We'll take like, a three, seven, seven, three. Yeah, exactly. I'm definitely using underneath, but I can under, I can totally get why you chose on top. Like, it makes perfect sense. And again, I just think that this race sets up to be one of those, Take a shot. You know, there's so many questions. And if Modern Games is this three-year-old that's, you know, worthy of seven to five, he can beat me at that. I'm completely okay with it. But yep. there just seems to be too many questions against him that I can feel comfortable keying him maybe, right? So, and Ivar, I bet he's going he's gonna to be two to one mm. math, I think. Yeah, because everybody's well. using him as an alternative to modern right. games, I think, right? So whatever money doesn't go to modern games is going to go to Ivar. And then I think you'll see a little bit of a sprinkle on Cheryl Spite because of the home team. And same thing with Mighty Heart. And mm -hmm. so I think it's going to be, I think the board is going to tell us an awful lot. But I think the two standouts will for sure be modern games and Ivar. And then I think we can just take our swings after that. <laughs> All right. I like it. I'm, I'll be swinging for sure with Homer screen. Wakanaka for Wakanaka. Sherry. The three. Yep. And uh, reminder, not just the Woodbine mile on Saturday, a couple of uh, grade one races for two year olds winning you're in for the breeders cup and Sherry is going to be there and has already told us that exclusively on go Philly <laughs> at go Philly on Twitter, uh, we're going to get some insight on how these horses look and uh, she's seen a few of them already. So she'll get to see them again and uh, looking forward to your thoughts on how they look and very thankful for your thoughts now, Sherry. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And again, I just want to mention to everybody, it's we've had a very dry summer and our turf course is going to be firm. And so that's something to take into consideration. Plus it's going to be a warm day. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be great. So if you see horses sweating, there's all there. They have every right to be a little bit heated, and but we will be having a firm turf course. So I think that's very, very important for when you're handicapping this weekend. Very. All right. Well, glad you're the weather is going to cooperate, and uh, I've already forgotten how to say it. Etobicoke. 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 <laughs> I knew, I knew the uh, the K and A K and E were silent at the end. Etobicoke. Etobicoke. Yes. Etobicoke. Next time. There's no Patterson this year, right? Uh, no, there's not. All right. Yeah. But you well, know, we have we. This is kind of this is my favorite day of the year of racing at Woodbine, just because it has the international flair. It's completely separate from from Queens Plate. I love Queens Plate, but this one to me. I love that, you know, we get the internationals come yeah. in and it's a whole different vibe. And the, the whole card is just spectacular. Serious two-year-old races are fun. Those two-year-old races are going to be phenomenal. There's some yeah. nice talent in there. So well, it's going to be uh, a real treat for Super Saturday, whoever's tuning in. So with no grade one after Saturday, I'd say let's see who from Woodbine shows up at the Breeders' Cup and we'll have you on to talk about those horses. Sounds great. I would love to. All right. She's All Sherry. Right. I'm Ed. This is Horse Racing Nation. The Woodbine Mile is Saturday at Woodbine. Good luck. Good luck, everyone.